everybody. Hey, Candace. Is it better now? <laughs> can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you, can you, can you, can you hear me now? What up, Can Can? How you doing, Chica? Girl, what's up? What's going on? What you doing this Sunday? I'm up in here in this kitchen cooking. Trying to get dinner together for these boys. Girl, it smells something good up in here. I am good. I am good. I've been at home all day. Um, I don't know if you've been out today, but when that snow started coming down last night, I was like, um, um I think I'm going to skip church today. Lord, forgive me. I skipped church today. But, but in my defense, I did watch Brother Jay's um, church service on Jay Wilson channel. So I did attend his church service. Um, on his YouTube channel, that was about a hour and a half church service, which was really good, y'all. Y'all should check that out on Sundays. For those of y'all who can't get out into the streets for church service, he's, you know, he be preaching on that YouTube channel. That's for sure. That's for sure. Had me up in here praying and shouting. <laughs> yes, what you eating? What's on your dinner plate? I want to know what everybody is cooking for their family today. You said you didn't even do that. <laughs> That's okay. God knows your heart. <laughs> God knows your heart. Oh, yes. That sounds good. I love peanut pasta. I love peanut pasta. I might actually get out later today. You know, um, I'm sure you've seen the Facebook post about Pops. He's in the hospital. My goddad is in the hospital. And um, Deanne, she uh, said if she go back out there tonight, she'll swing by and pick me up probably around 8 or 9. So, let's <clears throat> go swing by there and see how he's doing. Yeah, you saw the post. I saw you um, on the post on Facebook. Yeah, it's really sad. As a matter of fact, I didn't get to attend church today. And normally I would have, you know, when they called down for prayer, you know, anybody who need prayer for themselves or family or whatever, I would have went down there and asked the church to pray. But since I attended Brother Jay Wilson's um service on youtube i typed that in the chat and told him what was going on briefly a brief description and so you know everybody could pray and we prayed on the youtube uh live church service so yeah i've been constantly praying since i heard about that so that's why i'm like trying to cook and get stuff done just in case she comes by and swings and get me but yep. But um, I don't know what all I'm gonna cook. I just literally started. I chopped up all my vegetables and seasoned my meat and got my prep my flour and all that stuff before I came live. So y'all didn't have to see me do everything. But um, matter of fact, matter of fact, um, I'm making some uh jambalaya with chicken and shrimp and uh chicken shrimp and oh and dooley sausages and then making some uh corn on the cob and uh what else i'm frying some i'm frying some chick no i'm frying i'm sorry in the jambalaya shrimp and sausages and dooley sausages on the side i'm frying some chicken uh chicken thighs then we're going to have some corn on the cob. And I don't know what else. I'm thinking maybe a second vegetable, maybe broccoli. 
Rock. Girl, you know you're always welcome. <laughs> you know you can come through. You sure can. Yeah, that's what I'm cooking. But uh, Brother Jay Wilson, he's um San Antonio. He's in San Antonio. And he's a YouTuber just like me. But he used to preach. And he doesn't preach anymore, like over a church. But on Sundays, he has like a one to two hour live, you know, service. And, you know, he is just like he's preaching in church. He's just, you know, live with us on TV. I mean, not TV, on uh, YouTube. So, and I put my brown rice in here. That's it about five minutes. But yeah, um making some uh jambalaya with onions and peppers, green peppers and uh, uh Green onions, celery, all that good stuff. <laughs> all that good stuff. Yeah, you will have to check him out. His brother, matter of fact, let me um go over to his channel. I can do you one better. Do you one better. And get the link to his page so you don't have to search for it. Let's see. Jay Wilson. Okay. Here's the link. Okay. Okay, this is the link to Brother... J. Wilson's channel for Sunday Church. And you can check him out any other time too, but you know, I was just saying, you know, for folks who uh, don't or can't attend their own church services on uh Sunday, or even if you need some extra church in your life, even if you do attend church somewhere else. So that's the link. I just put the link in the chat so you can just click on the link and then click subscribe and click the notification bell. But he's so cool. And he's funny. He's hilarious. And he talked about he talked about all sorts of things on his channel, um, church, TV shows, celebrity shows, life finances um he did wrote books he's in the process of writing another book now for college students you know steps to get in college steps to go about getting financial aid and how not to try to get into financial debt and you know all that kind of stuff so you know he's really smart really smart But yeah, I like him. I follow I follow quite a bit of YouTubers, some for different reasons. <laughs> some for different reasons. But yeah, he's one of the ones that I watch a lot. But yes, you are so very welcome. No problem. No problem. <laughs> yes. Girl, um, how was your Thanksgiving? I was at Criolas and Pops for Thanksgiving. It was pretty good. You know, we ate good over there. Played some games. But yeah, it was cool. You said human hurts. He's pretty. You said he's pretty throw. Mm-hmm. Yep. 
Sure is. Yep, check him out. Check him out. Make sure you subscribe and follow his channel. Now, there's a lot of channels I could recommend. I did a live last night, and I gave a shout-out to, I think, about four or five YouTubers that I recommend people uh, follow. Um, so you might want to check that video out that I did last night. Um, you ain't pretty good. Oh, see, I, girl, I was so pooped from all those orders I had for cakes and cupcakes uh, the eve of Thanksgiving. When I got up uh, Thanksgiving, shoot, I could barely get out the bed. I was like, everything felt like it had arthritis. <laughs> everything felt like it had arthritis. <laughs> so... <laughs> but it was good so we went over there um in the afternoon and hung out over there till late at night playing card games and you know all kind of stuff but yeah i will have to recuperate i think that was the most orders i had for thanksgiving usually i try to take i try to stay around four or five to give me a to give me time to actually do my own holiday dinner and everything but uh yeah i heard a chest pie uh-huh yep 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 it's really good girl yes mm-hmm yep yep but yeah this year i did i had eight orders i think was it eight one two three four five six seven seven i think it was seven orders i had yeah, it took me like all day. I literally baked for like 24 hours, literally. Just hit me up. Just inbox me. Just inbox me. You know I hook you up. Shoot. I actually don't have any more orders until I think next weekend. And then I got some orders. I got a lot of orders next month for Christmas and Christmas parties and stuff like that. But, yeah, I get a little break. I love what I do, but I love my breaks, too. <laughs> I love what I do, but I love my breaks, too. <laughs> but, yeah, sure. Let me put this broth in my uh, rice. One Yes, this is about to be fire. This was actually what Cameron wanted for dinner. Cam Bam. Sunday dinner, I always ask the kids, what y'all want for dinner? And my oldest son wasn't here, so the youngest one, he was like, you haven't made jambalaya in a long time. So I figured I'd make some today. Yes, I was putting in work, girl. <laughs> I was putting in work. But it's fun. It's fun. It's like, you know how you enjoy something? Um, you really, really enjoy something. And it's kind of like, not work, but work, you know, is more fun than work. <laughs> yeah, they glad. They glad because they know mom, you know, she works a lot. She bakes a lot for other people. So sometimes I don't always get to cook 
a big three, four, five course meal, you know. So most of the time, especially through the summer, in the summertime, I'll be out there on that grill. I'll grill enough food to last like two, three days and then, you know, turn around and cook again. But I don't play that cooking every day mess. <laughs> Y'all better eat some leftovers or find something in that refrigerator to cook, to eat if y'all don't want no leftovers. But mm -mm. I usually cook about three, four times a week. That's that's good enough. But hey, everybody who's just getting in. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday fun day. We up in here cooking up in here. What's what's on your stove? What you cooking? What you eat? What you order? Did you get takeout? Did you eat in? <laughs> and make sure you like the video on your way in. Make sure you click subscribe if you are not already a subscriber. And please share the video to whatever your social platform is. Whether it's um uh Twitter. Facebook, whatever, whatever. But is it any games on today? I'm sure it is. Football, basketball. I haven't been keeping up with my sports. I've been too busy. Too busy. Keep up with my own sports. What you thought about that Nebraska game? The one, uh, what day was that? Was it on, uh, last Saturday? The Nebraska game, we lost by three points. What you think about that game? Did you get to watch it? Oh, the Vikings against the Packers. You say, girl. <laughs> I think by next year, I think we're going to be really good by next year. It was a close game. It was a real close game. I think by next year, they're going to be really good. Scott Frost is still getting them together. He getting them together. He gonna whip them into shape. Shoot. Next year, we're gonna be coming home with some trophies. You said Friday? It was Friday, yeah. Shoot, I told you I was recuperating. I got out of bed Friday after Thanksgiving. Um, hmm, what time did I get up? About noon, then me and my son got up and we did a little Black Friday shopping. And then after that, I came right back home. Right back home. So I relaxed. Yep. Yeah, we are going to definitely be a good team. I feel it. I believe it. I receive it. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I'm going to um, fry this check, start frying this chicken up next. Let this rice get partially cooked. And then, hmm, I don't know. The corn on the cob, that'll go well with the jambalaya. And maybe I don't need another vegetable. Since I got the uh, green onions and the peppers and all that stuff in the jambalaya. <laughs> you say because the game came on at noon. I mean 11. Oh yeah, we shall prevail. <laughs> we shall prevail. We shall overcome. <laughs> Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Who we play next? Mm hmm. 
Girl, and I'm up here making some uh making some um some fried some fried uh what I say some fried um thighs. I was gonna make some chicken breast, some baked chicken breast, and I was like, nah, I haven't fried any chicken in a minute. That was our last game. Oh, um. Well, it's always next year, like they say. It's always next year. Shoot, it's all about basketball season now. Well, I watch a few teams as far as um, football, but... I make a, um, oh, I was talking about the chicken. Oh, the chicken, I do like a, like a KFC version of the lemon herbs and spices. I got it from Rachel Ray. That stuff is fire, fire. <laughs> you literally use 11 herbs and spices. Like, mm, it's good. It's better than KFC. <laughs> But yeah, that's what I'm cooking today. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. And it'll be really, really crunchy. And mm -hmm. I like some crunchy chicken. <laughs> now, if I can get the Popeye's recipe, it's a wrap. Yes, 11 herbs and spices. But if I get that Popeye's recipe, I'm telling you. It's a wrap. <laughs> that Popeye's chicken, boy, that's the devil. That is the devil. <laughs> I'm like, uh, let me let me go on Google and see if I can find it. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go up here and yeah, uh huh. That's my favorite chicken. You know, back in the day, though, back in the day, of course, it was Time Out. Some people still like Time Out, but mm, I'll eat it, but it's not my go-to. Like, if it's late at night or, you know, Time Out, the only place open, I'll get it. Them big old turkey turkey wing chicken looking things <laughs> I'll be like that is not chicken y'all know that ain't chicken that them turkey wings Bojangles yes mm -hmm. that's good too that's good too do we where is the nearest Bojangles I tasted it out of town Hey, everybody, come on in. We just sitting around just talking about whatever. Mainly food. <laughs> What's cooking? What's cooking? What's cooking in your kitchen? What's brewing on your stove? Or what you eat today? What you order out? What you take out? I thought we did have one years ago. But we can use another one. Oh, look at that stain. Ah! Okay, I'm going to move that to the side. I'm going to turn this grease on. Turn this grease on. Okay, jambalaya smelling good. The chicken about to be cooking. 
You said it was in the old subway on North 30th? Yep, I remember. They are some pterodactyl wings. I'm like, come on. Where y'all be getting these wings from? I don't be seeing them in the store that be. <laughs> ah. Hey, I just realized y'all can only see my head. Can you? I look like I ain't got no neck. <laughs> oh. But yeah, they got them pterodactyl wings. They humongous. Humongous. I like their burgers. Their burgers. But I'm just not a huge fan of the chicken anymore. I'm just not. And some people be like swearing on that chicken. I'm like, no. Nah, it ain't like it used to be back in the day. I don't know who, who done took over. Who exactly done took over since then. But, mm-mm. Kind of like Skeet's Barbecue. Skeet's Barbecue is not the same to me either. I haven't ordered from there in a while. The last few times I ordered some rib tips, they were like either too, too, too gummy, too chewy, too tough. What am I trying to say? Too tough or either cooked too hard. So I haven't been down there in a minute. I haven't been down there. And I love me some rib tips. But one thing about me is if I try your restaurant out and I'm not satisfied, I'll come again later down the line. And if I'm not satisfied, I don't know. That might be the last time I come holler at you for a while. <laughs> for a while. I might complain. I might not complain. I might just chop it up, charge it to the game, you know. Ah, uh, you said it's trash. So who's your favorite barbecue spot now? I like, um, what's the other one? Uh, do you like, uh, what's the one on North 30th Street? Um, oh God, what's the name of it? Oh God, the one, um, the one on North 30th Street. What is that barbecue place called? Hold on. I'm about to look him up. Okay, Fat Shack. That's the name of it. Fat Shack Barbecue and Wings. Have you been there? They sell all kind of stuff. They sell pizza, barbecue, chicken, ribs, sausages. Um, What don't they serve? Yeah, Fat Shack. Yeah. I go there every now and then. Every now and again. They got some good rib tips. But, oh, don't sleep on, um, don't sleep on Family Fair. Family Fair. I don't know if y'all have a Family Fair where y'all are for everybody else who's watching. But Family Fair made some good rib tips. Shoot. <laughs> I was quite surprised. I went in there to buy some chicken one day. For dinner for the boys. And I was like, let me try those real tips. Because they were smelling good. Man. I was like, what? What? The grocery store real tips taste better than skates. Ooh. Ooh. You was told Fat Shack don't wash they meat. Who does that? See, you're going to make me stop going there. You're going you gonna to make me stop going there. You don't eat barbecue sauce? I can understand that. Sometimes I like barbecue sauce. Sometimes I don't. And when I cook, uh, when I grill in the summertime, um, unless it's just me and the boys, you know, me and my immediate family, I usually put barbecue sauce on all the meat. But if it's a gathering, a party, you know, something like that, I won't put barbecue sauce on it at all. I'll just put some in a bowl. Next to all the condiments and um, tell people, go for what you know. <laughs> and some people be happy, like, thank God you did not put barbecue sauce on the meat. So, yeah, I don't put it on my meat. I just set it to the side and whoever wants barbecue sauce, get barbecue sauce. But I do, I prefer it cooked on the meat. That's, that's, that's what I prefer. 
have it cooked on the meat. But again, some people don't like barbecue sauce on their meat. Oh, wow. See, I'm about to ask around now. Hey, see? <laughs> uh, hated it. <laughs> hated it. <laughs> what was that show? What was that show back in the day, Ken? Uh, in Living Color? Was it in Living Color? Um... Men on film? Was that it? Men on film? Uh, the Wayans, the one of the Wayans brother and that other guy. I can't remember his name. Oh my God, I can't remember his name. But they used to, men on film, they would talk about movies or whatnot. <laughs> Something like that. And they'd be like, hated it. <laughs> In Z formation. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. And then, um, uh, what was that? Like 1989? Something like that. I worked for this job and it was actually, uh, through CETA. And like, it was the grip of us, man. You know, the twins, Antoine, Vershawn, Scooby, um, it, it was it was the grip of us. Bernard, Bernie, Bernard Davis. It was a whole bunch of us. Um, Chantel. What was her name? Chantel. I can't remember. Oh, God. It was it was so many of us. And, um, oh, Kibwana. You know, Kib? Kibwana Cooper. We was deep down there for CETA. And anywho, we was working at this art place, like this art gallery in the summertime, learning about art and all that. And at the end of the summer, we had to put on a show for our parents and we had to think of a skit. And we went with that, uh, you know, it's called Men on Film on Living Color. We flipped it a little bit and we called it Men on Art. <laughs> It was hilarious. We had uh who who else was it? Uh Twan? Was it Twan? I can't remember that boy's name. I forgot. But we had like two guys and they we were like recording it. Some people work behind camera, some people work, you know. Yeah, men on film. And we did a men on art. It was hilarious. I wish I still had the recording, but it, that's been long gone. I don't know what my mom and dad did with that years ago, but it was hilarious. They was up there painting art and doing all this and had on wigs and big old ties like they did on the show. But yeah, it was funny. <laughs> it was funny. But yeah, then was the days, the good old days, the good old days. And we used to walk all the way from downtown because the location was downtown. Remember the Bemis building? One of the old brick buildings way downtown, like by 12th and 13th Street. It was called the Bemis Building. And it had Bemis written on the side of the building in really big, huge letters. That's where we was. And we used to walk all the way from downtown, all the way back north, every day. It was fun. That was the good old days. And we used to stay clown all the way home. <laughs> Be clowning. <laughs> But yeah, that was fun. That was a good old days. Now, how we get on that from barbecue? <laughs> how we get on that from barbecue? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do after this. I'm going to cook and then I'm going to sit down and yeah, don't work too hard on that laundry, honey. We was doing laundry this morning. I was bored this morning. It's like the house is mostly clean. Well, the house mostly stays clean all the time because I work a lot. The kids got school, work, all that. So we're hardly, you know, in the house a lot. And on top of that, everybody stays mainly in their own location until it's like dinner time or something like that. Or we watching the same show, a movie or sports. But 
I thank God I got big kids because I ain't got to worry about chasing behind no little kids cleaning up no house all day. Ugh. Hated it. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I will see you later. You have a good night. I might see you Tuesday if you come through. If you come down there Tuesday, I might see you. I'll be there. I should, I will be there. But anyway, you guys, I'm going to finish up my dinner. I have to, um, uh, let me check this rice. The rice boilers over. I love my big old cry pot. The best pot. Okay. Woo. I'm put my little shrimps in here. Matter of fact, I'll wait a little bit. Wait till that's almost a little more cooked. So I put my shrimps in there. All right, Ken, talk to you later. Okay, I see a few people still online. Y'all just up here gonna watch me cook. Say hello, who in the room? Who in the room? Who's in the room? Don't be shy. What y'all cooking today? What's going on with you today? Y'all watching football, basketball? I know some, some, a lot of people is probably um, spending family time right now. It is 6 o'clock in the evening around dinner time for most people. I'm just behind. I'm just behind. Normally, I try to have dinner done by... Mm, four, five, normally. <laughs> normally. It's not that much light in here. See, I need to buy some brighter lights for my kitchen. It works well when I'm cooking. It's, it's light enough for when I'm cooking. But now that I got my laptop in here, it's not that bright as far as my my face. But you guys can see me okay, so that's all that matters. Put this chicken on. Well, I need to give me some to drink. Put, put some in my drink. Y'all, I have two refrigerators. So I'm opening the other refrigerator that you guys can't see. That's on the opposite side of the kitchen. Give me some ice. concoction from the fridge. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
Okay, let's see. The three's hot enough? Yes, it is. Almost too hot. Almost too hot. Let me turn it down a little bit. <clears throat> if I burn the house down. Here. Can y'all see me? Oh yeah. Hey everybody coming in on the chat. Who that is? Hey Judge B BSN. You finally made my life. I'm just up here cooking. What's shaking and baking? What's shaking and baking? I'm up here making some eleven herbs and spices. Chicken. Just like KFC, honey. Just like KFC, honey. Pepper is better. Let me tell you that. It's better. Trust me when I say that. Let me move the camera a little so y'all can see me. Let me see. I think that's better. Yeah. So what's going on? I was asking people, did you eat out today? Did you cook today? What's on your dinner plate? Is y'all watching football, basketball? What's going on? I don't want to put too many pieces in there. Let me wash my hands. Yes, Father God, it smells good in here. Oh. Smells wonderful. What you cooking? Baked chicken, green, ooh. Ooh. You know what? I was just saying before you got on live to somebody else, Um, I was just saying I was about to make some baked chicken. But, but what had happened was <laughs> yesterday when I bought groceries last night, um, we came home and I told my old, older son, I said, uh, well, actually I was talking to both of them. I said, make sure y'all leave the, uh, put all the meat in the freezer, in the deep freezer, except for the chicken, uh, chicken breast. And I said, make sure, I said, the chicken breast, look at the label, make sure it's the big pieces of chicken, put it in the bottom of the refrigerator. And what happened? I get ready to cook and I pull the chicken out and it was the chicken thighs. So they put the chicken thighs in the bottom of the fridge and put the, <laughs> and put the chicken breast in the freezer. <laughs> I was like, what? I told y'all to put the chicken breast in. But anyhow, anywho, you know how kids are. You tell them one thing. Mm. Wrong part, honey. Wrong part of the chicken. But I had this really nice recipe that I use for uh, chicken thighs. The 11 herbs and spices like KLC, but much better. Much better. <laughs> It tastes good. It's really, really good. That's all they heard was chicken. 
That's all I heard. I asked them uh, yesterday. I said, what y'all want for dinner? My youngest son said, you haven't made jambalaya in a while, so can you make some jambalaya? I was like, okay. So um, I cut up my andouille sausages and did my shrimp and cut up all my vegetables to go in there. And I had plans for some baked some chicken breasts on the side, but... <laughs> but like you said all they heard was chicken <laughs> I'm like lord have mercy but at least they at least they left something out cause I would have been more upset if they didn't take no meat out but the 11 spices hold on let me uh hold on Hold on, I got a list right here on my phone. <clears throat> and what I do is, let me see here. Hold on. I have a, uh, folder on my phone for all my recipes. <clears throat> mm -mm. Okay, you ready? Matter of fact, I can type it in, too, if you want me to. Matter of fact, let me, tell, let me do this. Are you on the computer? Are you on your phone? Okay. Here we go. Matter of fact, hold on, honey, hold on. I'm going to pull it up on the uh, computer, too, so y'all can be looking at it while I'm reading it. Because this is from Rachel Ray. I got this uh, recipe from her. Okay, you use boneless fried chicken, first of all. She recommends chicken thighs. So I'm about to pull it up right now. So you can see it. And then if, you, um, if you're on your computer, you can screenshot my screen. Okay, let's see. Browser. Let me stop this video. We don't care about no folders coffee. We don't care. Okay. Okay, here it is. Here it is. It's on the screen. Is it showing up okay? Okay. Um, for the spicy flour, you need two cups of all-purpose flour. Matter of fact, you can just uh, copy it down from the screen, too. But you have two cups of all-purpose flour. Three table. Oh, hold up. Did I click off of it? Hold on. My bad. Rachel Ray, Rachel Ray. Okay, here we go. Two cups of all-purpose flour. I'll leave that up there for a minute so you can jot it all down. While I check this tea.
Let me know when you got it all down. You gonna screenshot it? <clears throat> okay, let me know when you got got all the ingredients down and then I'll move it to the uh, instructions and then you can screenshot that too. It's good. I mean, I'm like, dang, all these spices supposed to go in here and all these herbs. <laughs> because normally when I make my chicken, I normally, well, any of my meats, I normally use maybe four to five to six, probably six at the most. Okay, so um, you got that. Let me move it to the directions. Okay. Okay, that's the top for the preparations. So screenshot that, and then I'll move it down for the rest of the directions. Let me know when you got it screenshotted. Okay. Now I'm gonna move it down to the uh, to the lower half. So let me scroll down because it has more instructions on how to fry it and everything. So that's the bottom half of the instructions. And you got to use egg whites. Make sure when you use your eggs, make sure you use egg whites. All right, you got it? All right. Let me go back to my regular screen then. But yes, when I tell you it's fire, when I tell you it's fire, I have a cousin and every time we go, every time we go over somebody's house, because like ever so often, once a month or every other month or something like that, um, I'm wearing an old t-shirt. My son used to go to Northwest Missouri. But um, every time we go over somebody's house, like the family members, every now and then, I don't know if some of y'all families do it too, but it's really fun. Um, we have like a Sunday dinner, and it's either once a month or maybe once every other month. And every time we have it, we switch it up and choose a different person's house to have it at. But every time they be want me, they want me to make the same three things. Either my uh, famous green bean casserole, which is off the easy for sheezy, or my uh, dressing, my cornbread homemade dressing, or that chicken, that eleven herbs and spices chicken. It's so good. It's so good. They be like, Tanya, no, Tanya make the dressing or no, Tanya make the green bean. I'm like, y'all, I can make other stuff. And I'm also a, a custom cake decorator. I can bring a cake. <laughs> but yeah, and that too, cakes. I'm like, oh my God. If I go anywhere and I don't bring a cake, people will look at me like, if looks could kill, honey. Like, you didn't bring no cake? <laughs> <laughs> you said what? Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, it's good. Oh, you don't have no family where you live? Well, I hope you got some really good friends. Maybe you can try that with your good friends, your homegirls or your, you know. Because we do it for, it's not just family. We have friends who do it too. 
friends that's been around us for so long, they like family. You know, and we post it on Facebook. And basically we'd be like, okay, it's friends and family um, Sunday dinner. And it's a potluck. So everybody brings a dish. And thank you, honey. Thank you. No, I didn't go to baking school. Nope. I did not go to baking school. I, I thought about it because here we have this college called Metro Community College. And they have a, I mean, they have a fantastic culinary um, department. Fantastic. I know a couple of people who have went through their culinary um, department. But actually, I thought about going there just to get like a certificate, you know, <laughs> just to get a certificate. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm, I'm self-taught. Self-taught. Yeah, it's fun. I mean, it's just something to do. Um, we have our friends and family and the kids. I mean, especially if it's in the summertime. The kids, we, all stop, we be putting a uh, volleyball net and have baseball bat and softball. And it's just fun. And everybody gets together over some good food. You know, something other than a holiday. Just, and then we do this also because we have a large family here in Omaha, Nebraska. Our family is actually from Mississippi and Tennessee. And probably, I want to say probably 60, probably no, probably 70% of our family is in Memphis and Mississippi combined. And 30% of us is up here in Omaha because, um, my grandma, my great grandma, she had like 16 kids. And out of those 16 kids who she had in uh, Coldwater, Mississippi, um, only a couple of those kids actually moved away from home. And my grandma and one of her favorite sisters moved here in Omaha back in the 70s. And so that's how we ended up in Omaha. But out of all of the 13, 14 kids that my great-grandma had, they all still live down south with all their kids and all their family and their grandkids and great-great-grandkids and so on and so on. So, but yeah, it's just, a, it's just a thing that we like to do. Oh, you're from Alabama? Hey, Alabama. Mm. You know what? I made this cake. Hold up. Let me show you something. I made this cake. For a lady whose daughter was a huge, a huge Alabama fan. Let me show you this cake. I made this cake probably like a year ago. Let me see. Here's my Facebook page, Tanya's Delight, Slice, Slice, Slice. Um, I made this cake a long time ago. Let me see. Where is it? Here it is. I made this cake. This lady, she was like, her daughter is such a huge um, Alabama fan. So she wanted me to order. She ordered a cake and she wanted an Alabama design on it. So I made her a two tier cake. And she liked it. Her daughter liked it. I can't, and don't ask me what flavor it was, because I, I, I can't remember what flavor it was. But, um, okay, how do I get back? Okay. But, um, but yeah, I made that for her. Rose High. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I incorporate the, the uh, colors and, the, of course, the A and that pattern. You know that pattern, that black and white pattern? 
that represents Alabama. Mm-hmm. Yep, her daughter loved it. She was like, oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> well, yep, that's what I do. I'm a custom cake decorator by night. Chicken. It's the first, the first set of chicken out. Now you know when you guys, when you, when you guys fry, let me turn the computer. When you guys fry chicken. I actually put on the, the wrong screen. There we go. That's the big screen. When you guys fry chicken, get you some grocery sets so you don't have to clean up after the grease. Double or triple the bag. Make sure there ain't no holes in there. Some of y'all probably already do this with us. Y'all that don't, find your bowl. Get the sacks in there. Put the strainer bowl on top. Let it strain. Let the grease strain into the sack. That way you don't have to end up with all that good stuff grease. Beautiful chicken. Thank you, Rachel. Ray! See, I already got my chicken season already, you know, dipped in and all that. So, I cut up all my vegetables for my jambalaya. I did all that before I got on live. And also, I don't know, I season my meat and then I put a bag of flour and I season my flour in a sack. Because, you know, sometimes you season your meat and the season come off. When you flour it, so I always flour my seasoning all as well. And I try not to put too much meat in one skillet. Because you want your meat to cook evenly, of course. Okay, hands are clean. Now I'm about to put these shrimp and my rice that's been cooking for about for about 35, 40 minutes. I put the shrimp in here and my jumbo line. Add it to the, the unduly sauces. And of course, all the vegetables. They're added up. Make sure all the shrimp is covered so it can cook well. Shrimp don't take that long to cook. I'm going to turn this on low. Put the lid back on. Chicken's on. Booyah. Booyah. Yes. <laughs> Honey, I used to use paper towels too. But you know, black people, even other people, when we come home from the grocery store, what do we do with our sacks? We crowd them in a closet or either in a drawer. And I have a skinny drawer. You probably can't see it from here. But I have a skinny drawer that I put all my bags in when I come from the grocery store. And my bestie, she taught me that a long time ago. 
my best friend. She lives in Florida now. But um, she was like, girl, why are you wasting bowls and paper towels and all that kind of stuff? Just use them sacks. One of them gazillion sacks that you got, uh, you know, in your cabinet. And so then when you take the sacks out, um, and then, oh yeah, I let my bowl sit overnight with the grease in it so the grease can firm up and get hard. And then the next day, you can just tie it up in a knot and put it in the trash so you know the grease is not going to leak. Just in case it might have a tiny hole. But it's, and then as far as your bowl, ain't that much grease that will be in there. Maybe a, maybe one drip if you make sure you use bags that don't have holes in it. And just rinse it out, clean it up. It won't take much. A little soap, a little water, and put it in a dish rack. <laughs> but, yep. <yeah. laughs> but, you know, it's convenient. I'm all about convenience. I'm all about convenience and less mess. Less mess is the best. Like, seriously. <laughs> seriously, I be having a system. But you got to have a system. I'm a cake decorator, so I got to have a system. Um... Like when I bake cakes, like the other day I had like seven orders. I'll I bake my cakes overnight, let them stiffen, let them firm up, you know, let them cool down, you know, all that. Uh, because one thing you don't want to do for those of y'all who might bake cakes at home for your family, I'm sure some of y'all probably came across it, where you take a cake out and you start frosting the cake before it's completely cooled off and then your icing gonna melt <laughs> your icing's gonna melt it's gonna look like melted chocolate on your cake so you gotta let your cake completely cool down but me i like to wait um if i'm making a whole bunch of cakes i like to make them at night time and have them cool off and all that then the next day i make my frostings and all that and then uh decorate my cakes one by one one by one. So, you got to have a system. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some people ask me questions sometimes about baking. And then when I tell them an answer, they be like, oh, my God, that's what I was doing wrong? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, my gosh, this lady... One day, this lady, where was I at? I don't even know where I was at. I would think I was at a store. And a lot of people know me by face because I'm a, I'm on social media a lot. I got several YouTube channels, Twitter, Instagram, several Instagrams, my Facebook. And I'm well known around my city as the cake lady. So um, this lady approached me. She was like, you're the cake lady, right? I'm like, yeah, I am. She was like, man. She said, um. I was going to order a cake from you, but I wanted to be one of those moms who was like, I'm going to make my own child's cake, you know, and I'm going to do it and I'm going to, you know, <laughs> and that's cool. I'm, hey, I don't be hating on people who make their homemade cakes. I mean, not homemade, but, you know, open a box, make you a cake, you know, and try to decorate it for your child. But this lady tried to make a two-tiered birthday cake. Um, with fondant, like after you made the cake, you, you know, you put your frosting on it or whatnot, then you put your fondant on it, you know, she was covering both tiers with fondant. Um, first mistake she made was the cakes, when you make a tier cake, like wedding cakes, that's, that's your example of a tier cake. Or like the cake that I just showed you guys, that Alabama cake. There's cakes, and then there's smaller cakes stacked on top of that, and then smaller cakes stacked on top of that. Man, you can do you can do tons of tiers of cakes, depending on how you know how big the customer wants the cake. Um, what's that chick name? Something K or and Gucci Mane. Did y'all watch the uh, special? Their wedding special. It was on, uh, I can't remember what uh, channel was on, but Nick, what is her name? Nikki Kaor, something Kaor and Gucci Mane. I watched a uh, wedding show, their reality show, and the cake they made was beautiful. 
But uh, some people was like, Tanya, they had like a six, seven, eight tier cake that they had to use a sword. They had to use a sword to cut the top tier. I said, keep in mind, y'all, when y'all see pictures of cakes that are like 10, 12 feet tall, keep in mind, y'all, it's not all cake. Yeah, Keisha Kaur, it's not all cake. There are um, people who want big, big tiers like that. Some of the layers in between is boxes. They're fake cakes. They're boxes. They're, they're made out of foam. They're made out of foam, and you just decorate it like you would the real cake. The real cake. So the bottom cake, the real big bottom cake might be a whole cake. It might be foam. And the next tier might be a real cake. It might be foam. But however they decorate the real cake, they decorate the foam. And that's also how some people practice decorating cakes. You can buy foam, round, cake-shaped models at any cake store. Yes, you knew that, see, yes. And some people don't know that. They'd be like, oh, my God, they probably spent a gazillion dollars on... Come on now. That cake, if it was truly, truly a cake, that cake would probably feed about... 3,000 people. <laughs> Truly. It, I mean, the bottom was like, the bottom of the cake was like so huge. But some people, they don't know. You know, they don't know. They don't know about a lot about the cake background. <clears throat> Excuse me. And let me flip my, uh, flip my, uh, again here. But, yeah, they don't know a lot about the cake background. And they be like, oh, my God. They made that cake, and it's so huge. There are my shrimp and sausages and the But, yeah, some people be thinking, you know, it's all cake. People who don't know any better. And, um, and, uh, what was I getting at? Oh, but, yeah, this lady, she wanted to make the cake for herself. Right, right. And she, her first mistake was... <laughs> She, okay, when you make a tear cake, the bottom cake, no matter how many layers it is, and normally my tear cakes, I have two layers of cake at the two, two pans, you know, two big pans. Stack them on top of each other. That's one tier. For, depending on the design or what the customer wants, I might add a third cake pan to make that first tier, and it'd be three cakes for the first tier. Depending on how high they want each tier. But you have to put your rods in the cake. There, there's what you call rods or bamboo sticks that you have to put in your cake. And you can look up any video that shows you how to make a tier cake. I don't know if she skipped that part of the video or if she even watched the video. But she didn't put her rods in the first layer. Because you have to put rods in each tier in order for it not to fall. And that's what her mistake was. She didn't put her rods in the cake. And the cake started leaning. It started falling. And it was a hot mess. And she was like, she was in tears. Because she tried so hard. And it took her forever. She was like, I was working for hours on that cake. Hours. And she said the fondant wasn't right. It wasn't smooth enough. It was, I'm like, I said, homegirl. And it's this little white lady. This cute little white lady. I said, homegirl. You better call me next time you want me to make your daughter a cake. <laughs> I didn't tease her or nothing, you know, because when I first started out, if you go to my Facebook page, like some people won't show you their beginning work. I don't care. I like to show started from the bottom now here. You know, that's my mentality. So if you go to my uh, cake decorating page on Facebook, my very first pictures, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, those are my very first cakes. My very first cakes. And you look at them very first cakes, and then you scroll up and up and up and up, and you're like, dang. You would think I went to, like, the best school, but I didn't. It's, I'm all self-taught. 
But you got to start from somewhere. That's why I don't tease nobody who might make a mistake making cakes. Because I made a lot of mistakes. A lot of mistakes when I first started out. I mean, I didn't, it wasn't like anything that I put out, like gave to a customer. It was when I was learning, when I was teaching myself, I made a lot of mistakes, but yep. So, you know, you learn, you live, learn, and you do better. <laughs> but I felt so, I really felt so bad for that lady. Like if it would have been close to the birthday time, me, the person I am, I would have just made that little girl another cake. But she made it seem like it was a long time ago when she when she actually made the cake. I would have just made a little, another cake for that little girl. But, you know, practice definitely makes perfect. It definitely makes perfect. That is like, like, for real. Especially with cake decorating. Because, um, like, when I first started trying to make a cake, Trying to make the frosting so smooth. I mean, just smooth. It's hard to make a cake look smooth. Like some people, okay. Some people like that real smooth, elegant look. And so they'll pay somebody to make them a cake, frost it and everything with frosting, and then overlay it, overlay it with fondant. Because fondant has that smooth look. But... If you're really, really good and you practice and practice and practice, your cake will look like it has fondant on it. It won't even look like it's frosty. Like, let me see. The cake, matter of fact, this is a cake I just did recently. One of my Thanksgiving orders. I'll show y'all my Thanksgiving orders. Okay, two of the cakes I had for uh, Thanksgiving were carrot cakes. And here's one of them. There's one of them. And if you look, I mean, you have to look really, really, really close. Or either be like, you know, touch the cake. To tell if that's fondant or buttercream. It's, it's just really smooth. Across the top, around the sides, it's like really smooth. It takes a lot of practice to make buttercream look that smooth. And that was one of the cakes. And the other cake I did, that's the other one that I did for somebody for Thanksgiving. And again... Some people might look at that cake and be like, oh, that's fondant that she used. She frosted the cake and then overlayered it with fondant to give it that smooth, smooth look. But no, no fondant at all on those cakes. I work with fondant, but if a customer don't ask for it, I don't use fondant. Taking this chicken out, so give me a second. Okay, here I come. Change the screen back. <clears throat> Thank you. Yep, yep. But, um, why I keep putting up that other screen? I'm, I keep meaning to put up my big, large screen so you can see more. <clears throat> but, yeah, with, um, with, uh, as far as the frosting texture, when I make my frosting, because I make all my frostings from hand, from scratch, and... As far as, like, I don't make my, my frostings, I don't make it as firm for the layers in between the cake, of course, because you don't want to bite into a cake and then the 
crossing in between the layers is all hard and stiff. So I don't make the frosting for the layers in between firm, but after I do a lot of layers, and then I firm up my frosting. Then I firm it up to do the outside of the cake. Because if you don't firm up your frosting for the outside of the cake, then your frosting will start slumping. It will start slumping. And it will start coming down the side of the cake. And then when you go to put your uh, piping, your designs on the top of the cake or on the bottom, around the border or the bottom border of the cake, your all your piping work that you do will end up falling off the side of the cake. And that's horrible. That's that's horrible. By the time your customer gets their cake and they receive it and they take it to wherever they're taking it to, and they open the box. Y'all don't do that. I don't want that to happen. But again, it takes a lot of practice. A lot of practice. Yeah, it takes a lot of practice, but if you're ever interested in, um, what was that lid? If you're ever interested in doing it, don't be scared. And I got into, um, I got into cake decorating from my mom. She passed a few years ago. <clears throat> oh, how do I transport? Um, I only transport tier cakes and they got to pay me extra because when I transport them, um, a tier cake, you should never, ever, ever, ever try to transport. Never. Even if you have your rods in them, because unless you have to stop on them brakes real quick or something like that, that cake is going to go flying and it, just don't ever try to transport the cake stacked up always whether it's two tiers three tiers four tiers five tiers always have them individually in one box individually in one box but i don't transport cakes unless it's tier cakes like a wedding cake or you know a tier cake even if it's a birthday or anniversary or whatever if it's a tier cake i transport them i don't allow my customers to transport the cake because for one, unless you are, unless you know, really know about cakes, um, you won't know how to put the rods in it and you won't know how to, you know, stuff like that. And then you got to put your, um, your uh, parchment paper under each tier and, you know, you wouldn't know about stuff like that. So I do, um, I charge for uh, delivering my tier cakes and because I have to set it up. So I have to I have to set it up. Might take me like I don't know. Might take me like thirty minutes to set it up. It just depends because sometimes when you set up your tier cakes, um, if you're at the event, like when I did a wedding, the last wedding I did, um, when I got to the event and I set it up and I stacked my tiers from touching the cake, you know, some of my my you know some of the frosting got you know an indent in it or something like that, you know, from my finger or whatever. And so I always bring extra frosting with me as well when I um, take my cakes, when I deliver them and got to stack them and, you know, put the rods in them. I always bring extra frosting. And that's just in case I'm stacking the cakes and I accidentally 
touch the cake too hard and it swipes off some of the frosting. So I bring extra frosting with me, you know, to put on the cake. So, but yeah, I transport them in cake boxes and cake boxes. Yep. But um, as far as a tear cake, um, like maybe like there have been times, there have been times like I went to somebody's house because I was bringing the dessert and I transported myself. In that case, I was like, I drove really, really slow, you know, but if I was to the smallest cake, if you really have to have the cake already stacked, I would say don't go no higher than a two-tier two-tier cake. And what I do under those circumstances, um, I go to uh, UPS and I buy boxes that are really high and really wide the size of the cake. And I'll put the two-tier cake in the box and then I'll put like plastic across the top of the box. To keep any, you know, anything from getting on top of the cake. But normally, normally I don't. I have it all separated in different boxes. That's the smarter things to do. Nope, nope. I don't do them all at home. Nope. For family and friends, yes. But no, I have somewhere where I do my cake. It's a hot mess trying to do cakes if you do them all at home. It's a hot mess. <laughs> because nobody would ever be able to use your kitchen. <laughs> it's a hot mess. Stuff be all over the place. And as you see, my kitchen is a nice size, but it's not as big as I would want it. Like when I move, I want to definitely get a bigger kitchen. And I'm also looking for a new place right now for where I do cook my cakes. But right now, I have a guy friend of mine. Um, he's been searching for me for new property because I'm trying to move to a new location. Centralized location because I have customers from all over. I have customers that come from different cities. Customers in my city come from like four or five different cities from around me. And I'll be surprised. I'll be like... Get phone calls from people who stay over an hour away talking about I would like to order a cake. I'm like, you coming all the way to me to get a cake? Okay. Then you driving? And then you driving back? <laughs> so, no. Uh-uh. No, no, no. But yeah... I haven't been on this live for like an hour and a half, honey. Let me flip my ticket. Hold on. That is the last of the chicken. I took the whole pack of chicken size so the boys will have enough for today. Some to eat tomorrow, the next day if they want to. I do smart cooking. I don't never cook enough just for one day. I always cook enough for like two, three days. You got to do that when you got kids and when you got a job. Or in my case, more than one job. But yeah. But yep, if you ever um, wanted to ask me any questions or anything about baking, all you gotta do is hit me up. I actually started a, um, I actually started a baking um, YouTube channel, but I haven't put any content on it yet because I have to get me some. I have to get a nice setup. I need lights, like big lights. I need uh, a nice camera. I need you know a tripod and. You know, and then there's a lot of editing involved because it takes time to make a cake. It takes time to decorate a cake. Um, it takes time. So I would definitely have to do more editing and stuff. 
you know, show people how to mix the cake, how to make the batter for whatever flavor I'm doing at the time. And then show people how to frost the cake and, you know, so forth and so forth. So, you know, you got to edit it. So people to edit, to break it down to like a, you know, five, 10, 15 minute video. So, yeah. So I haven't quite tackled that yet. And everybody's like, why don't you do YouTube? You know, show people how to make cakes and all that. It's easier said than done, especially when you have other jobs and you have kids. A lot of these people who be doing these cake videos, they ain't got all that. They got time on their hands. Because you really got to do some serious editing. Not only does it take hours to bake and decorate a cake, that takes hours. Then you have to edit it. That takes time. And then <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> People who do that have plenty of time on their hands. So, yeah. But, I, I mean, like I said, I, I, I started the channel. I just haven't put any content on it yet. Um, I was thinking like the perfect time for that would probably be once my youngest son goes to college because then I'll have no kids to, you know, look after and cook for and transport to and from school and sports and, you know, all that stuff you do with your kids. So I would have definitely have more time because I really, really would love to make cake videos and show people the proper way to make a cake, bake a cake, um, you know, layer a cake, even a cake, trim a cake. You know, it's, it's so much involved. So, yeah. But I'm, 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 I'm going to do that. But like I said, my son graduates this spring. So I'm thinking I'm going to start my cake, actually put content on that channel, probably a little bit after he graduates, like next summer. And then another thing, um, I'll be able to, uh, what was I about to say? I can't remember. I can't remember. Oh, well, oh, well, I'll, I'll think about it later. But, um, yeah, I'm thinking about doing that, so... I have the channel. I mean, you know, the name of my uh, cake business is Tanya's Delight Slice by Slice. So I have the YouTube channel already created. I just haven't put any content on there. But again, I will. I will. You can count on that. I will. Definitely. Because mainly, it's mainly a hobby for me. It's always been a hobby. And as I was saying earlier, uh, I started it after my mom passed away three years ago. Because she used to always make the cakes for holidays and for the kids and grandkids, birthdays and for her nieces and nephews. You know, she was like the person who did all the cakes. And after she passed, it was like, I didn't even think about cakes after she passed. But when my son's birthday came around, the one that had the youngest one, when he turned 16, um, because she passed when he was he was 15 and he's about to be 18 in a few months. So it's been about three years ago when she passed. So when he turned 16 after her, after she passed, I'm up there. I didn't order a cake. I didn't. I'm like, I was like, I forgot. I wasn't even thinking like mom usually makes the cakes. <laughs> so he was like, mom, did you order a cake for my sweet 16? You know? And I had to order a cake and thank God, you know, the place where I ordered the cake, I think it was a grocery store or somewhere. Um, they were able to make the cake on short notice. But when I uh, ordered the cake, I think the cake was like, I don't know, I don't remember how much the cake was. It was a sheet cake or half sheet. And it was like, I don't know, 30, 35. It was, no, it was like $40, like $42. And I bought the cake, took it to the Sweet 16 party. It was minimum decorations. I mean, you know, what I, I tell people all the time, a lot of people don't know that when you buy cakes from a cake 
like a like a grocery store or even a cake store, they don't bake their cakes on site. The cakes are never fresh. They order cakes from manufacturer who manufactures cakes, who, you know, it's like an assembly line. They make the cake, they frost it. They just frost the cake. The no designs, no borders, nothing like that. They just frost the cake. Then they box it up, they freeze it, and they ship it to their customers, the stores. So that's why some people is like, really? Are you sure? Come on now. Go up in a, any grocery store, any grocery store that sells cakes. Go up there and ask them where they oven at. <laughs> that's all you got to do. <laughs> ask them where they oven at. You know what a cake smells like when it's baking? Sit there for five minutes and try to sniff some cake. You ain't going to smell no cake bacon because all the cakes from the stores, they order them already made. And then they order frosting, like big, huge buckets, big, huge tubs of frostings. They order them. They can keep that frosting frozen up to six months. They can keep the cakes frozen up to six months. And that's basically what they do when they, every time they get low on cakes that are sitting out, you know, or orders that come in as soon as they get low they take out so many cakes thaw them out you know let them sit out for some hours till they get room temperature and then they take some of that frosting that they order in that big bucket and they use that to put a border on your cake and then they give it to you that's it that's all they do and these cake stores and the grocery stores that's all they do is put a border on your cake um you know and i had one lady uh she wanted a, she wanted a chocolate, was it a chocolate cake? She went to the grocery store and tried to order, matter of fact, it was Walmart. She went to Walmart and tried to order a, she wanted a wedding cake, but she wanted it to be chocolate, chocolate, 100% chocolate, chocolate frosting, chocolate inside out, three layer cake. They told her they couldn't do it. The only flavors that most grocery stores do is white marble um what's the other one white marble and i forgot the other one then they only do so many different frostings um and so she came to me for the wedding cake and i was like that tells you right there if they baked from scratch they would have had no problem making you a three-tier wedding cake but they don't they order everything in and they order what's popular a lot of people don't like chocolate cakes so they don't have chocolate cakes they might have sitting some chocolate cakes already sitting in the glass window already decorated and they put like a 7.99 sticker on it or something like that but as far as a big, huge sheet cake, birthday cake, or a tiered wedding cake? No, you're not going to get that. You're not. <laughs> so a lot of people come to me because I custom decorate cakes. I do whatever you want. Yep, white marble and vanilla. That's it. That's just that's it. Just BSing. You ain't getting no red velvet. You ain't getting no uh, carrot cake. You're not getting no... I mean, they might sell the small ones that are already made the small ones for like five six seven eight nine dollars that's already made sitting out front but as far as your birthday or wedding cakes no you're getting three basic flavors and they're already made they're already made yep if it's a if it's a chocolate cake it's already is one of the ones that they have sitting out in the front on display and if you call and say you want a little chocolate cake, they might ask you, okay, what you want on it? And then you know how some people don't pick up their cakes? Like let's say somebody order a cake and they don't pick it up. You know what they do? They, they scratch off or scoop off the decoration of whatever name the person ordered, happy birthday, Henry, or whatever. They scrape it off, re-smooth the frosting, and put that son of a gun back in the refrigerator and resell it to somebody else. So 100% of the time, your cake is never fresh. 100% of the time. And that's why some people um, some people say, 
Um, last time I bought a sheet cake at Walmart or any other store, last time I bought a sheet cake, it was, it was like moist, but this time it was like dry or last time it was too hard or this time it didn't take fresh because you never know how long your cake actually sat in the freezer before they thawed it out and put a border on it and handed it to you. And they're going to charge you $40, $50 for a sheet cake. <laughs> <laughs> so but you know I don't look down on people who order cakes from a store I really don't <clears throat> but it's nothing compared to a homemade cake totally from scratch compared to them cakes that they order from them cake manufacturers cake companies and have shipped in and you know, it's, it's not the same. It'll never be the same. Once you taste a homemade, custom decorated cake from a good baker, some people out here can make a cake look absolutely like it's worth $10,000, but the taste of the cake is horrible. So it takes a lot of practice to make your cakes taste as good as they look and look as good as they taste. From Sandra Lee. I like Sandra Lee. Yes, I follow her. I follow a lot of people on YouTube. A lot of cake decorators um, on YouTube. I follow a lot of them. And sometimes I'll check out their um, videos and look for look for ideas on like designs and stuff. So, yep. I follow a lot of people on YouTube. But it's fun making a cake. It's nothing like it's nothing like cake decorating. It's like the coolest job. <laughs> it's like the coolest job. And you can literally like your cake when you bake a cake and it's just look beautiful and it tastes great and all that. And they put it on display at their parties. It's like the I mean, especially if it's a wedding. The main part of the wedding is the dress. The second part of the wedding is the cake. <laughs> ain't nobody looking at what food you serving uh the designs on the chairs or the walls or i mean it's like the main focus is the wedding cake the second focus i mean the main focus is the wedding dress and the second focus is the cake what the cake look like what the taste what it gonna taste like so yeah but i always tell people if you got questions you can ask me. If I don't know the answer, I'll find it for you. <laughs> I definitely will find it for you. But I'm about to get off this line, y'all. I enjoy talking to you guys today. For all those who checked in, I know it's a Sunday. A lot of people making, you know, cooking dinner or chilling with their family or watching their football or basketball. So... But I at least wanted to come to you live today since I don't have any reviews. Um, uh, what, what's that come on tonight? Um, uh, what comes on tonight? Oh, matter of fact, it's on right now. Um, oh, Housewives, Housewives. So I'm going to watch that. I got to record it. So I'm going to watch that and sit down and chill out with the kids and eat some dinner. Thank you. I'm glad you was able to catch me live. I have two channels, but um, lately, this channel is the one I mainly go live from. I might, uh, and then I'll like, uh, I, I um, download the video, and then I'll load it up on my Tanya's Primetime TV channel. But I mainly go live over here. But, yeah, Real High Side of Atlanta. Yep, I'm about to get into that real quick. And I'm going to do a review on it tomorrow. <laughs> but, you guys, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful Sunday. And I hope you enjoyed the live. And I hope you enjoyed some of the tips that I gave on baking and cooking. And um, it's, it's what I really love to do, baking and cooking. That's where my heart is at. But, um, and y'all, you know, always feel free to share some tips, too. You know, when we're talking and discussing cooking, you know, that's what I'm going to start doing on my Sundays. You know, the Sundays I don't have to work, that is. You know, having a little hour of cooking and people give tips or, you know, their favorite meals or, you know, and I'll give a few baking tips, you know. <clears throat> but 
Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you like the video. Vid, the video. Okay, how Brother Jay say it? Brother Jay Wilson. Make sure you like the video. <laughs> if you did not like the video, make sure you click that like button and like the video. And then make sure you um, subscribe if you are not already a subscriber. And share the video on your social media sites like Twitter, Facebook, you know, whichever one you use. And... In the meantime and in between time, Prime Time Squad, stay safe, be blessed, and I'm out.